Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sam, and today I'll be reviewing the novel Lockdown, Escape from Furnace by Alexander Gordon Smith. Escape from Furnace is a five book series. However, I'll just be reviewing the first one today, as I truly believe after the first book, you'll be hooked. Even though this book focuses on 14-year-old Alex Sawyer, it is considered adult science fiction rather than YA because of the maturity of the content within its pages. James Patterson himself was quoted as describing this book as ferocious and fresh. If you want a book to kick off your spooky season, this is it. But first, let me give you a breakdown of the world building and some of the plot before we delve into the scarier aspects of the book. In a not-too-distant future of our own, violence among youth has skyrocketed to an all-time high. After a period known as the Summer of Slaughter, the Government of London took a zero-tolerance policy on any violent crime committed by a minor. A giant underground prison was built called Furnace Penitentiary, and if you were a minor convicted of a violent crime, you would go there until the age of 18 where you would be shipped off to a regular prison. Focus in on Alex Sawyer. The first chapter is a very blunt yet very simple explanation of how Alex became a common criminal at the age of 14. What started out as schoolyard bullying soon turned into robbing houses. The second chapter, called One Last Job, is where things really get started. Alex and his friend Toby scope out a house that they believe is unoccupied for the evening that could bring them in a decent haul. However, they are not alone. While rooting through the house, Toby and Alex are confronted by a group of men in black suits. And, spoiler alert, one of them shoots and kills Toby. In a panic, Alex flees from the house. However, he is later apprehended and put on trial for the murder of his friend Toby. He pleads with his family and the judge, exclaiming his innocence. But after the summer of slaughter, nobody wants to listen to him. And so he is sent to Furnace Penitentiary, where he is to discover the true definition of hell. The entrance of Furnace Penitentiary is something out of nightmares. A windowless stone spire with smoke clouds billowing around it, and as the bus draws closer, Alex notices that there are statues carved out of the side of the building. And actually, these are torture scenes designed to instill fear into anybody who approaches the building. One of the kids on the bus with Alex actually has the balls to mutter about how it doesn't look that bad, and then one of the guards chuckles and reminds him that this is only the entrance. Where they'll be is miles underground of Furnace. And as they're being shipped off the bus and into the gates, Alex notices that one of the guards has a mole on his chin, and that is in fact the guard who killed his friend Toby. But at this point, what can he do about it? He and the others trudge through disinfection chambers, change into prison uniforms, and take a machine gun-laden elevator ride deep into the bowels of Furnace. Each boy is assigned a prison bunk, and this is when Alex meets his new crew of fiendish friends. With their help, Alex might not only be able to survive, but he may be able to escape and prove his innocence as well. Now that you know the general idea of where the story is going, let's talk about the truly terrifying details of lockdown. So I already told you about the scary aesthetic of the prison. Electric fences, machine gun elevators, torture sculptures. But what's underneath a furnace is much more reminiscent to the painting Pandemonium by John Martin. The prison is painted to be a hellscape and Alex witnesses an attempt on his very first day there. He's basically told that ending your life in Furnace is not an option. If you try and jump from one of the balconies, it's likely that the fall won't kill you. Either you jump from too low of a height and the fall won't kill you, or you jump from too high of a height and your body bounces, and instead of being a quick death, you die slowly and painfully. This is exactly why this novel is not labeled as young adult fiction. I've read many books that feature death or attempts, however, this was made in a more gruesome and terrifying way that I believe should only be labeled as adult. Now that's not to say that teens wouldn't like this, however, I would be vigilant giving it to anybody under the age of 16 because I'm not sure how much they could handle it. 
Lockdown goes beyond the realm of physical horror and dives deep into the psychological terror of it all. To begin with, the guards are all giant men in black suits. They're intimidating, abusive, and physically unnerving. If you've ever read the Ugly series by Scott Westerfield, the suits actually remind me of the specials in a lot of ways. They remind me of how they are almost human, but not quite. How they're almost human, but something more. And while being the muscle behind Furnace, the suits are actually one of the least terrifying creatures that live down there. Howling echoes through the halls, and Alex soon discovers that the guards have these hellhound-esque dogs. Described as being wet, vicious, and appearing to almost have no skin, this is what the kids actually face when they dare to step out of line. But really, the most chilling of it all is the red light and the gas masks. In the middle of the night, a red light will appear in somebody's cell, and you better pray it isn't yours. These men come with gas masks. They come with their dogs and take you away in the middle of the night kicking and screaming to what everybody else only assumes is the deeper bowels of Furnace. And those taken away never come back. As a reader, we get to see Alex endure all this, and as the story is written in first person, we get to experience this with him. I think this was a really smart choice in the writing style because it makes the story that much more intense when we are as blind as the main character about what's going on in this prison. The fear and anxiety are incredibly real, and the dread at not only Alex, but possibly most of these kids being in jail for a crime that they never committed feels like rocks in your stomach throughout the entirety of the book. There were actually moments where I had to put this book down for a minute because I was either grossed out or genuinely disturbed. Now, there are no supernatural or magical elements to this book, However, I wouldn't exactly describe it as a thriller-type horror, either. Lockdown does thrive off urgency and the adrenaline rush that a thriller would normally bring, but instead of it being predominantly fear-based, this rush is more of an escape than a survival tactic. In Alex's case, death might be more of a welcome change, yet a unamusing early end to the guards. So, if you're in the mood for something that keeps you up at night, I recommend kicking off your Spooktober reading month with Lockdown. It has everything you could want from a horror sci-fi novel and more. Well, that's all I've got for you today. What reads are on your list for this creepy season? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, all my other social media will be linked down below, and I'll see you guys next week for more shenanigans.